Hey guys, Jessica Flynn here, owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. Welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. This is my very first YouTube tutorial. I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, I wanted to kick off the channel with something big, so I'm gonna bring you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I do my gypsy leopard design. I'm going to show you how I do it from beginning to end um, and hopefully you guys can learn and make one for yourself at home. So I hope you guys enjoy the videos. Um, if you like our channel, please subscribe, like those videos, engage in the comments. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I promise I will try to get to as many questions as possible. And of course, you guys can always reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy, FlynnSistersBoutique.com. Let's get started. All right, welcome to uh, part one of the Gypsy Leopard tutorial. You're gonna wanna start out with a fully sanded and prepped cup. We just sanded it ahead of time and cleaned it up with some acetone and then some Dawn dish soap and water. I'm gonna start with the gold swirl part of the cup. This will be the focal point of the design, so it's going to be the largest swirl uh, that we paint. So if you see, I'm just kind of going in short spurts with my gold spray paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Metallics Gold. And it's just short spurts and rotating the cup as I go. I like to make sure that both ends of the swirl um, from beginning to end are visible when you're looking at the front of the cup. So keep that in mind when you're creating your swirl. So here you could see, you could see the beginning and end from the front. Uh, now I'm going to go in with the uh, secondary colors. This is Rust-Oleum Harvest Grape. And I'm just spraying in between the line that I created with the gold. So the silver part that's exposed. And you're going to notice in this video I'm actually using colors um, that you wouldn't see on the traditional Gypsy Leopard. So there's going to have uh, purple and the light purple will be added as well. That's because this particular cup will be a violet gypsy leopard. It will not be the traditional gypsy leopard colors. Um, so I will post the actual colors that I use for both the gypsy leopard and the violet gypsy leopard in the video description in case you want to do the traditional gypsy leopard. So here I'm just spraying the purple. This is the second kind of secondary color that I'll have on here. And I'm just aiming between that maroon color and the gold. Again, just short spurts of spray and rotating the cup as I go. I'm not really concerned about the bottom. I kind of just spray a little bit of color on there, however. All right, and now I'll do the lightest color. These are gonna be my accent colors. On traditional Gypsy Leopard, this would be like the mint uh, teal color that you see. And I'm just kind of working along. And then I'm going to go back over any spots where I might have oversprayed, um, especially on that lighter color. I kind of got a little too far into the gold. And you're just gonna kind of keep working with your spray until you get a good swirl going. Um, and really what we're doing here is we're just mapping out where our glitter is gonna go. Make sure that if, when you guys are doing this, you're wearing a uh, organic vapor respirator. Um, even though it's just spray paint, it is very dangerous. You should be doing this in an open ventilated area. Um, also make sure you have some gloves on as well. Uh, normally I would spray paint outside, but for the purpose of this video. <laughs> so next up, we're going to do the glitter for this cup. So stay tuned for that next step. Um, as you can see here, I've got everything base colored and ready to go. See you soon. All right. So we've got our tumbler spray painted with the paint swirl, how we want it. 
okay and it's um i put it in front of my little heater so it could dry so my tumbler is warm to the touch which is what i prefer when i'm applying epoxy for epoxy method um <clears throat> And the reason for that is that the epoxy tends to just slide on like butter. I'm not dragging and I can use a little less than I would if my cup was cold. And you're probably going to use about one to two milliliters of epoxy on this. Okay. So we're just gonna go over and make sure every square inch of the cup is covered, okay? Every bit of it. Watch out for this ridge and the lip of the cup, which is where you tend to miss. We're gonna push it into the logo if your cup has a logo. You get all the space on the bottom. Okay, and then we're gonna just kind of set that down and let it sit for a little bit. Now, if you notice, these colors are not traditional gypsy leopard colors because for this portion of the video, I'm gonna be doing a violet gypsy um, just because this is what I have to work on right now. <laughs> um, I do still run my business full time on Etsy in addition to making these videos. So you guys are gonna kinda just see what I do for actual orders. These aren't just demonstrations. Okay, so this'll be a violet gypsy leopard. It's gonna have different colors than a traditional gypsy. I will show you what a traditional gypsy leopard has. So in the traditional gypsy leopard, which we'll get to this step in the next video. Um, you've got the maroon, you've got the light iridescent teal, and you've got the gold, and then there's these pieces of charcoal gray. If you want to make a traditional gypsy leopard, instead of the violet gypsy, you, the colors that I use for that are Athena from Pog, or PT Olive Glitters, Zodiac, or Figgy, from peachy olive glitters, this biggie, um, and 10, 12, 13. Um, this charcoal gl uh, gray color that I use in here is not peachy olive, um, so I will not be listing that color in this video. Um, and then the spray paint I use, I will um, put, on a, put in a picture in the video as well, so you can see the colors for the base paint on both the Violet Gypsy or the traditional Gypsy Leopard. Okay, so that's that. Now, the base painting on the uh, traditional Gypsy Leopard will be the same as you guys saw me do for this one, okay? All right, so we have this covered. It's been sitting for a minute. Take my gloves off, dispose of this extra epoxy. <clears throat> and we'll get started on the glittering part. Um, so I like to glitter swirls a little differently. A lot of people um, like to glitter swirls on their turners as the cup's turning. I prefer not to. Um, I started out with a carousel style turner and so I did all my glittering off the turner when I first started anyway, and so that's kind of just how I learned, and it's what I'm more comfortable with. And so I think um, I developed, oops, my own style of glittering uh, swirls because of that. <laughs> and then once I did have regular turners that I could glitter on I just I didn't like the look of it 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 turns out too perfect to me I think okay so all I'm doing is with the gold which we're doing first is I'm going really lightly okay I'm just like you could tap it on if you need to but I'm going on it really lightly and you see like 
some of that gold is going into the other colors that we've painted. And all I'm doing with these first bits of glitter is kind of establishing where I want my like lines of demarcation, I think it's called, where I want my fade lines to be. Um, I'm just doing a light first layer because I want to leave some epoxy exposed through the glitter for when I come through and do the other colors. So right now we're just going very lightly, okay? Think of this part as like your rough draft in the paper that you're writing, you know, like, or maybe the brain storm I don't know. Just don't wanna go full out yet. Now the next colors um, that I'm gonna be using are Alexandrite from Pog, or Peachy Olive Glitters, Teague from Peachy Olive Glitters, Baby Violet, Peachy Olive Glitters, and um, Kadabi from Peachy Olive Glitters, okay? These are what I use along with Athena for Violet Gypsy, okay? <clears throat> so we're gonna go in with Teague. Teague is a very fine purple, so you're gonna just really lightly dust. I don't know if you can see my arm here, but I'm just very lightly shaking it. So I'm just like very, like I'm just shaking my hand and a very light dusting. Again, I, I don't want like a lot of coverage right now. I just want to map out where my colors are gonna kind of go and start the line for blending, okay? So next we'll use um, Alexandrite. Actually, no, I'm gonna go and cut down. So sometimes um, a lot, I get, a lot of people tell me that my glitter has like a lot of depth to it. And the way that you achieve depth in your glitter is by kind of stacking a lot of different sizes. So I'm stacking like a 0.08 glitter. I'm stacking kind of a medium sized chunky glitter. I'm stacking like a, I don't know what size Abby Cabby is, but it's slightly larger. Like I'm going to stack like a 0.15, like they're all going to be different sizes and I'm all going to be kind of blending and stacking them together. That's also why I prefer to do um, epoxy method because it gives me the ability to layer, I guess you would say. And then this bottom, I don't really care what I do on the bottom, I just kind of randomly sprinkle stuff. So I just kind of randomly sprinkled Kadabi in there. It, it's really just gonna be giving me depth. If you were doing traditional Gypsy Leopard, you would be glittering it in the same way, just with those colors. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with um, Baby Violet, um, and I'm going to take Baby Violet right over Athena. I'm going to fade it around the edges of Athena, the gold. Just kind of letting it go where it wants. So my hand, when I'm shaking the glitter, it, this is what it looks like. See that little shake? If you drink a lot of coffee, this is gonna be really helpful. <laughs> okay, so just layering that over Athena. I'm gonna try and get it into that Teague as much as I can. See here, I went a little too heavy on the Teague here. So I'm not able to get 
movement from the other colors into the tea. You wanna watch out for that. Um, that's why you really wanna go light on your colors first. Okay. We're gonna go in with Alexandrite. Actually, excuse me. I'm gonna do Figgy first, really lightly along this maroon line. Like that's it. That's all I want on there. Really sparse coverage. <clears throat> then Alexandrite over that. Coming up from really high and just a really light dusting. Alexandrite is a 0.08, so it's gonna come out really fast and it's not going to spread out very much. So you really have to, just a light dusting. <clears throat> okay. So, so far that's what we're getting. And so since I can't take baby Violet and Nathena into the Teague, I will bring Teague into here because I know this is sparse enough to accept more color. So we'll go back in with Teague. This is another advantage of glittering off your turner is the ability to Really kind of like start and stop angle if you need to. Okay, so see now I have a little bit more of a fade. Okay, so now we'll pull more Baby Violet into the Alexandrite and the Figgy. Um, the paper that I use when I glitter is uh, parchment paper from Costco. It's inexpensive and I can reuse it a lot. Um, and it's nice and big so it catches everything. So here we go, more baby violet into this maroon here. into fatigue. Bring it into some of that gold. I could be a little more aggressive in how much glitter I'm putting on now because I have some layers built up. Okay, I have the fades that I want pretty well established. Um, so I could be a little more aggressive when I'm pouring and not uh, worry about messing up. And really all I do when I do my um, glitter swirls is I just keep going in color over color until I like it. So that's 
coming together. The bottom is kind of just a hodgepodge of whatever fell. Um, I don't really pay much attention to that. Um, if you look at um, traditional gypsy, I just did the gold first, then I did the maroon, then I came in like very lightly, then I came in with the iridescent teal over the maroon, okay? And just kind of filled in as needed. And then I left some space to do some of the black. There's not a lot of the black in there, but okay. So this was done in the same exact way as this. It's just less colors. Okay. <clears throat> Um, when you guys are planning on what colors to do for these and like how you want to do your swirl, I typically do like my two most dominant uh, colors first. So like in this case, it was the gold and then the purple and the maroon and then all your kind of accent colors, you'll just sprinkle in throughout. Um, so I think this is just about done. I do want to get a little more baby violet in with the gold and make sure that I really got coverage in there. I tend to forget to go back in and do the gold part. So now that I've got all my layers pretty well built up, I can just kind of let her rip. that's about done so when you look at this look at all that sparkle and there's dimension and there's depth and we are only on the first layer so this doesn't include when we do the spots which will be in the next video and then in the third video I will show you guys how I do like the swirly lines um, over this part and we're going to add more glitter in that third step if you will so that's that that concludes this part of the video um, I will list the paint that I use for the base colors in the end here and I will see you guys in the next video to do the leopard spots. Thanks so much. See you later.